Welcome to Morning Glory Farmstead. My name is Lolly, and this channel is all about gardening, animals, and nature. Y'all, this is the bantam chicken named Pigeon that you see in a lot of my videos, and she has learned that if she comes to the hummingbird feeder set up outside the kitchen window, she'll call me and I'll open the window and throw her some treats out. So this has become a regular thing every day. I am sure that by now in my videos, y'all have recognized the black landscape fabric that's kind of been pulled up in several places. Well, that's thanks to all my bigger chickens. You know, that landscape fabric has been there since I moved in. It's kind of getting old, but those chickens have done a great job of pulling it up piece by piece for me. So if you guys are ever interested in hiring out to have your landscape fabric pulled up, I'd be happy to rent my chickens out to you. Jack heard the birds this morning and jumped right up on that window lid. Y'all look what my sister sent me. They're little note cards with morning glories. Oh my gosh, they're gorgeous. And they have a little bee on the front. And then look at the stamps that she sent to go with them. Oh my gosh, these are so cute, you guys. Oh, I love these. These literally just arrived. So if you're listening, thank you. Y'all hear that? All I've heard for a week and a half to two weeks now is the logging trucks and trees falling and cracking. I'm about ready for the quiet peacefulness out here again and to hear my birds singing. All right, y'all, I'm about to give you the biggest secret I have to getting birds to your property the fastest way possible and to get the most variety minus your hummingbirds and that is a source of water and the sunflower seeds without the shell or it's also called the hull h-u-l-l -L, but i call it the shell that is the fastest way to attract the most birds because whether they're large or small almost every single one that eats seeds will eat those and you guys know i have like eastern bluebirds and mockingbirds and things that don't normally eat seeds that also eat those like crazy so if you want to attract birds the fastest that's what you need and you can just throw the seeds on the ground you know bird feeders are amazing they are more for our enjoyment but the birds don't have to have them now they would love them they love the hoppers and the fly throughs and the trays and all the things Y'all, there are so many things that you can purchase just to make a total utopia for yourself and what you see when you look out at the birds. It can be on a small scale, it can be on a large scale, and it's endless, you guys. The toys, the things that they can stand on. I have a Ferris wheel in the back that's really old, but it's a Ferris wheel that you can put seeds in. And when they land on it, it turns. But right now it's in the chicken area and I need to move it because I don't want birds in there with the chickens. But my point is opportunities are endless to grow and to put things up that you really want to look at visually, but all you need is water and a good quality sunflower seed. And I just wanted to put that out there before we start this video and get into the educational part and also just the things that I've observed on my property from these birds. Some of it is straight up facts about the birds and some of it's just their behavior and things that I have observed through all the years of feeding these birds. This is a total side note real quick, but when I went out there to get a quick shot of the old Ferris wheel bird feeder that I have, I thought I'd collect a few of the eggs while I was out there. Y'all have five million baskets to collect these things in and I'm bad about using my shirt to collect them. What I wanna do is introduce you to nine of the most common types of birds that come to my property. And y'all probably have some of these or birds that are similar to these in your area if you're already feeding birds. And if you're not and you put out feeders, I guarantee you, you're gonna see some of these. Now the chances are, even if you've never fed a bird, you probably would enjoy it if you like dogs, cats, or any other kind of creature at all. My goal is to actually promote more bird lovers like myself. So I'm hoping that if I just introduce you to some of the common ones, you'll see how beautiful they are and how much joy they can bring and how much color and vibrancy they can really add to your life. 
And you guys, you can start easy. You can start with one feeder and just see how much you like it and just let it grow from there. It doesn't have to be overwhelming. You guys, growing up, I never even noticed birds unless there was a blackbird somewhere or a huge flock of birds. I didn't even know that there were all these beautiful birds with so many colors. And so that's the joy that I want to spread. I want people to be enlightened when it comes to birds and how much joy they can actually bring. There are so many beautiful birds in each of your areas. Even if they differ by different regions in the country, you're still gonna find the most beautiful birds in your area. I'd really love to hear comments from you guys. If you're already feeding birds, put some comments below about what you see in your area and maybe where you are if you don't mind sharing the general state that you're in. I'd love to hear it. Or if you're even thinking about feeding birds, I'd love to hear that as well. All right, let's get started. All right, y'all, let's start with the hummingbirds. These are not in any order of importance, although I will say I'm having a fabulous time watching the hummingbirds use my setup. And y'all, I have zoomed in so that you can see the iridescent color on the bird, the green and the purple, but you're gonna have to forgive that cock back there that looks dirty that was just redone two years ago. I guess maybe that's a long time. Um, and then the, you know, pine straw on the shutter. <laughs> it's for effect. And y'all check out the male. Look at that ruby throated hummingbird. Did you see all that red around the front of his neck? Woo! Y'all may know this already, but hummingbirds are critical to flower pollination. They love and prefer that nectar from the flowers, but they'll drink that sugar water too when there's nothing else available. But they also love tree sap and insects when flowers are scarce. Now they use their tongue, which is forked at the tip, to gather the fluid. And when the bill squeezes shut, it compresses. And it compresses the tongue, allowing the hummer to actually lap up that nectar. And this process happens 15 to 20 times per second. Now research shows that they're likely to return every year to the same area where they were hatched. And some of them migrate up to 4,000 miles, y'all. Some of them are around the 500 miles, but all the way up to 4,000 miles. Now, the ones that don't travel quite as far, they might migrate a little bit later. And so they say you should always keep those feeders out a little bit later in the season for those late migrators. Now, they actually migrate alone, not in flocks. Can y'all imagine migrating? I don't care if it is 500, 500 to 4,000 miles with no moral support and nothing to give you a ride, my goodness. Now there's actually hundreds of varieties of hummingbirds and their nests are super tiny. They're like the size of a half dollar coin and they lay really many eggs, kind of like jelly beans. They build their nests out of lichen, moss and spider webs. And y'all, I wish they would build some and use up the spider webs that keep showing up out front. I just cleaned off that stuff a week ago and the spiders are back in full force. And the female is the one that usually builds that nest alone. Now, because food sources aren't always readily available, they've actually evolved to being super aggressive and territorial over their flowers and food sources that might be eaten by other birds or even other animals. And most of what they eat in nature is obvious to the eye, which means not only can they identify it easily, but so can other animals and birds. Now, they actually see color better than we do. And although that color leads them to the flowers, they actually prefer whichever flower has the richest nectar because they're looking for nourishment. So it's not just about the color. And did y'all know they take 150 breaths per minute? They can hover and fly backwards and their wings actually beat about 50 times per second and they can actually go faster if they need to for certain types of flight. And they usually reach up to about 37 miles per hour. But when they're doing those courtship dives, I don't know if y'all have seen that, but they go up and then they come down really fast. They can actually reach 60 miles per hour. That is insanity. Now, there are a few varieties that sing, but most of them just kind of chatter or squeal, especially when they're being aggressive. And they sound like little race cars or mini airplanes flying by when you're close to them. I am sure some of you guys have had that experience where they just come up right behind you and kind of startle you. And you're like, oh my gosh, what was that? And they are so fast. 
But they love um, bird baths, especially the kind that have misting water. They may even go through a sprinkler. They have super high metabolism needs. And so they have to eat every 10 to 15 minutes, which is why they're so protective of their food sources. Otherwise, things can drop in their bodies and get extremely low. And that is not good. All right, so those are just some fun facts about hummingbirds. Let's move on to the cardinals. All right, so cardinals are typically remembered as those big bright red birds, and those are the males. And the females are more of a tan or brownish tone with some red, but they still have a bright beak. Now, unlike the hummingbirds, the cardinals are not gonna migrate. So once you have them at your feeders, you're probably gonna have them all year long. A lot of times the male birds are the singers, but the female cardinals are one of the few female birds that will still sing as well. They may share songs by going back and forth and singing to each other to reinforce that pair bonding during the breeding season. And they have more than 24 songs. But when you feed them, you'll probably get more familiar with the most common songs that you hear. Now they love the sunflowers and the safflower seeds and they'll eat off the ground or in the feeders. Um, unlike some of the smaller birds, they can actually eat the black oil sunflowers that still have that shell. Some of the beaks on the smaller birds are really not strong enough to break that shell, which is why I always have the sunflowers without the shell available. And all of the birds will eat those sunflowers. And they also eat bugs, fruit, nuts, things like that. They love peanuts. And I'm really heavy on the peanuts during the winter. I do put some out in the summertime as well. Um, and I get the peanuts without the shell. They are always the last to stop eating in the evening here at my house. They're gonna eat even when it's getting pretty dark, but when it gets dusky at all, all of the other birds disappear like clockwork. Now, usually they build their nests in evergreens about four to eight feet off the ground. And a lot of times this is easily accessible to predators. This is a huge issue with these cardinals. Now, because they don't migrate and they're super familiar with their area and their resources, they actually start breeding in February. So this gives them a longer breeding season than some of the other birds. And even with their lower success rate because of predators, y'all, I can easily have 40 to 50 cardinals around eating at the same time. Now, keep in mind that birds are territorial for sure. But over the years here, as they've learned the food supply is constant, they've adapted their behaviors. Um, there are set territorial ranges of how far apart nesting boxes should be and so on. But over the years, the birds have ignored those rules and they nest closer to each other. And those changes have not only occurred with territory, but also with the foods that they eat. Because birds like Eastern bluebirds and mockingbirds that they say don't eat seeds, actually do eat seeds here because they see that that is a consistent food source. Now the female cardinals do most of the work building the nest and they lay three to four white or light grayish colored eggs. Now the male is gonna stay near the nest and the baby birds have to be fed up to eight times an hour. Y'all, this is an exhausting time of year for the birds, even in the best of conditions. And so even if you don't feed the birds, just having a water source somewhere around would be super kind of you. About 20% of cardinal mated pairs will separate but the rest are gonna to stay together for several seasons. Now, during the cold winter months, they're a little bit more independent of one another, not so attentive, but then they come back together during the breeding season. All right, let's move on to the American goldfinch. Now, the male finches are super bright yellow, but they actually molt and lose their feathers and can turn a drab brown. And then later they get their bright feathers back. Here we have a male on the right and what looks to be a female on the left because she's much more muted than the bright male. So you may actually see a goldfinch at some point and not realize that's what it is just because they have molted. Um, now the male cardinals are larger and brighter and so when they molt it's super obvious and they just look so pitiful sometimes. Kind of like they've been in a fight with a larger bird or they've got some awful disease but it's just molting and it comes back and they look beautiful again. Now the goldfinches are one of the last to breed each summer and so by this time it makes it easier to find wild seeds for their babies, but they actually still come to the feeders all the time. Now they lay about four to six pale blue eggs. 
And most baby songbirds will eat bugs, but finches actually feed them seeds from things like milkweed and thistle. Now they love my feeders because I have the sunflowers without the shell, and I told you it's easier for them to eat, but they also love niger, which is also called thistle, and millet, which both I'll be getting soon. Um, the thistle feeders are an awesome and different experience from the other feeders that I have. They're totally different because only the small birds can get into the little holes and they're kind of in an upright position rather than a tray. Now I have a lot of types of feeders, but I've got to get some of them cleaned out really good before using them again. By the way, you'll notice my feeders get dirty because of the high traffic but I clean them frequently. So sometimes you're gonna see them look dirty in the video because they get dirty throughout the day. Um, and sometimes they'll be cleaner than other times. If you don't clean them, you can actually encourage disease among birds. So just tidy them up. If you're gonna use bleach or something like that, you really need to rinse it off super good and let it dry for a while before putting seed back in that feeder. And I honestly don't use bleach. I use water and a large brush that I bought from a bird store to clean it off really well. Now, if you're in a warmer climate, you may see finches all year. The authorities state that they will hang out all year if the average temp is above zero. However, I'm in North Carolina, which is a place that is considered one of the hangouts all year for these birds, but they leave every winter. They do migrate. The only ones that don't are the ones that are probably too old to make the flight. You'll see a one-off here and there. So maybe they're old, maybe they're getting sick, something like that, and they're just not able to make that flight to a warmer climate. So you may have some that stay around or not, I'm not sure. I have plenty of food, so there's really no reason for them to leave. So as far as I'm concerned, I think they are migrating farther south to a warmer area. Now they usually fly in flocks of 50 to 100. All right, let's move on to the mockingbird. Now it's called the Northern Mockingbird, but it's actually super prevalent in all of the Southern states. Now these birds are a little different than the others I've talked about because the markings are the same on the male and female. You're not gonna see any bright colors like you normally do on the other males, but you will be able to tell the male because they sing way more than the female mockingbirds. And by the way, there have been many times when I've expected to see a certain type of bird at the feeder, and it was actually the mockingbird. Y'all, they can just hear another type of bird sing and mimic it. And they actually have over 200 songs. So he sings throughout the day, but also late in the evening, and then also starts again around 3 a.m. And if he doesn't have a mate, he's gonna sing all night to let the ladies know that he is available and he is looking for a mate. And y'all, I hear him. He sleeps right outside the garage there in one of those big bushes that I have. So searching for that mate is a serious thing. All right, now the one thing about the mockingbird being so territorial, which you can see in a lot of my footage, he's, he's super protective and territorial, but actually that's a benefit to other birds because larger birds eat the eggs and baby birds during breeding season. And every day I see the mockingbirds flying around after the larger birds and doing their best to peck them and get them to fly away. And they also dive bomb on squirrels because the squirrels will actually eat the eggs and the babies too, even though they love to eat all the seeds and nuts that I put out. Y'all birds go through a lot to make the nest, lay the eggs, hatch the eggs and feed their babies many times every hour. And due to things like predators, only one out of every three birds actually survive. So it's not like they're pregnant for nine months like a human, but you know, they do care for their birds and they have to lay these eggs and make sure the eggs are kept safe and then feed them. It's just a lot of work to have very few of them survive. They're just easy prey in the nest. And then when they hop down out of the nest, they can't fly yet. So now they're even easier prey because they're on the ground just hopping around and they can't go anywhere fast. So they hop around in the grass and under the bushes and trees while the parents are calling them, trying to keep them close, keep an eye on them. All right, let's move on to the house finch. We've already talked about the goldfinch. Now the birds with brown and red are house finches. And the females are actually the brown ones. And again, the males have the brighter color to attract the females. So they're gonna have a lot more red than those females. Now they eat a lot of what the goldfinches eat, but they also love peanuts, suet, and fruit. 
So their diet is mainly seeds, weeds, and berries, and they build their nests on branches or even man-made structures and lay about four to five eggs that are bluish white color and they're spotted. And they are all over the country all year round, so I have no doubt that you guys are gonna see those in your area. All right, let's move on to my personal favorite, the red-bellied woodpecker. Wicka, wicka, wicka. I know I sound crazy, but y'all, that's one of the sounds he does, and I love it. All right, I have three types of woodpeckers that come to my feeders throughout the year, but the red-bellied woodpecker is my favorite. I love his calls. I love his body, the way he hops around. He puts his beak sideways on the pavement or the ground to eat the seeds I put out. And now, although he has red on the top of his head, he is not the red-headed woodpecker. The red-headed woodpecker's entire head is a deep red, and we're talking face and all. So this is clearly just the top of the woodpecker's head. You have to catch this woodpecker in the perfect position in light to see the red feathers on the belly. Their bodies are usually parallel to the trunk. I think that's the right word. They're kind of up and down against the tree trunk as they hop up and down the tree until they're ready to fly down and get the seed. Now they're a little bit different that they have two toes that face forward and two toes that face backwards. And this kind of helps them with the type of movements that they do and for balancing. Now again, the females have less red. They have a little at the base of their bill and on their napes, but not actually on the top of the head. And then you can tell a juvie red belly because they look just like the parents, but you can barely even see a hue of red until they get older. So they kind of just look like a, a grayish color and you really don't notice the red unless you look super close, but you'll be able to recognize them once you get familiar with the red belly woodpecker. Now both male and females are super vocal throughout the year. And she's gonna lay four to six white eggs, usually in a nest, um, in a tree stump or something like that. And they're both vigilant about protecting the nest from the starlings, the snakes, and other woodpeckers. I mean, if you've got a nest in a tree somewhere or some kind of cavity, I mean, that's just a prime spot for other things that wanna go hang out and, you know, easy prey. There's no tiny hole like in a birdhouse, you know, anything can get to them. And actually the males will take night shift and kind of keep an eye on things. They are super prevalent in the Eastern half of the U.S but even more so in the Southern states. And mine stay here all year long, which I love because you guys, when it's winter and things are drab and everything's just dormant, you've got these beautiful woodpeckers with this bright red color coming to your feeder. So it brings a lot of joy to the winter season. Um, they really love wooded areas. And so I'm hoping they don't leave now that all of those I don't even know how many acres of trees are being logged right next door that I've showed you guys. I'm hoping that they'll be able to find some kind of habitat, at least in my tree line or across the back of the property behind my yard. I don't know. I'm pretty devastated about it. I can't even fathom all of the bird nests right now in the middle of breeding season that have been knocked down. That habitat, those birds have been there for years. I know the woodpeckers and a lot of the birds that I've been feeding for years fly straight over there after they get their food or in the evening after they're done eating. So they're gonna have to figure out what else they can do. I am gonna add some more um, bird houses and things like that on my property. Um, now they eat acorns, insects, and berries, but at my feeders, their favorites are suet, sunflowers, and peanuts. All right, let's talk about the chickadee. Now, that black and white bird is a chickadee. There are several types of chickadees. This is actually the Carolina chickadee. They're fast, but they're not afraid to come when I am close by. And these go as far north as Pennsylvania and over to the west about mid-Texas and then down into the southeast states. And they say that about 90% of their diet is made up of spiders and insects but that they'll visit feeders. And obviously that's true because they're at mine all year round every single day. And y'all, they have the cutest nest. I did show y'all one recently with the little babies in it. Um, and they always have the dog and the cat fur in it that I put out. And they also use the green moss that grows on some of my little pavers and bricks that I have lying around in different areas of the yard. And they lay about six tiny eggs and their numbers are actually on the decline. 
just an easy target for so many things. So also just remember, we can help by keeping water and feeders clean, keeping the nesting boxes high with proper dimensions and predatory proof entrances and things like that so that they can't get to the babies. All right, these are morning doves, as in being sad about something morning, not early in the morning, which I love. Now, they love seeds and they can eat 20% of their body weight in seeds daily. They collect the seeds in their crop and then they digest them later. Um, visually, there's not a big difference between the male and female. I can always tell when a dove has seen a hawk because the speed at which they fly is incredible. There is a complete difference between them just kind of fluttering away and flying off when I come out or startle them and when they've seen a hawk in the sky. I remember the first time I saw it, I was dumbfounded by how fast they can get going quickly. It's like zero to 60 in two seconds. And they mate for life and they both help feed the babies. They usually lay about two eggs at a time. And y'all, they are so calming and peaceful. And I just love hearing their coos in the evening. Now, as far as territory, they can be found just about everywhere. All right, let's talk about the tufted titmouse. Now, the word titmouse actually comes from Old English and it just means small bird. These birds are usually with the same partner for life as well, just like the doves and they like to live in an established area. Now, they don't usually build their own nests. They nest in tree cavities or abandoned woodpecker holes, things like that. And they also use moss and grass and fur. And they lay anywhere from three to nine eggs at one time. Can you imagine laying nine eggs? And they're kind of a creamy color. Occasionally, um, the juvie titmouse will actually stay with the parents to help with the next generation of babies. And that's not true for just this breed. I've heard that about other breeds as well, but that is one thing they pointed out with this one. They eat insects. They love caterpillars in the summer, but it really loves the sunflower seeds. And it only takes one seed at a time. And that's if it's gonna stay on the pole and eat it right there between its feet. It'll peck, peck, peck and eat it right there or if it's even going back to the nest, it only takes one seed. But because of that, they store or cache away these seeds no more than 130 feet from the feeder. Now they really prefer woodlands and swampy areas and stuff like that, but they have adapted to residential wooded areas, which is obviously the case here. Now, a couple things I wanna talk about before I wrap this up. Let's talk about water really quick. So just a reminder that water is super important all year round for birds. They drink it, but they also have to take baths and it helps clean their feathers and it gets rid of parasites. Now birds preen, P-R-E-E-N as in Nancy, several times a day, which means removing the dirt, dust and parasites from their feathers. And they even arrange their feathers y'all to make them the most aerodynamic for flying and to make sure that they're insulated properly as protection from the cold and even to protect themselves from the heat. They actually have a preen gland that excretes an oily substance and they help distribute this to all of their feathers evenly so that they're waterproof. But it's a balance y'all, they can't have too much oil and so they need to be able to take baths and some of them even will take a dust bath to help with this. But they need the oil to be at a certain amount on their feathers. And so they will even take baths when it's snowing and below freezing outside, okay? Because they have to keep their feathers clean and in shape because this is how they fly. If their feathers are weighed down or dirty or they've got all these parasites, they're not going to be able to get away from predators. And also they've got to have healthy feathers in order to fly and find their food. So just keep that in mind and make sure you keep the water clean so that we help limit the spread of disease. Now, the other thing I want to talk about, because I see this a lot, you know, if you're driving through neighborhoods and stuff like that, you'll see this. But when I first started feeding birds, I just loved everything bird, you know, bird decor and all that kind of stuff. And I started putting out these little houses and pretty things just in case birds wanted to hide out from the rain and things like that, even though I knew they weren't the proper dimensions. Well, what happens is you have little birds like chickadees and things that will actually go in there and build their nest. And I've actually seen nests get completely destroyed 
and all of the baby birds eaten right before they were ready to leave the nest and it's so sad so if you're gonna put something out that you like make sure that it's super high or just don't put it out at all or if you're gonna put something out make sure it actually fits specifications for what is safe for birds to keep predators out of them because raccoons and snakes and cats and all sorts of things can get into these things if they are not made properly not to mention you've got to think about ventilation that's super important in birdhouses and things like that all right so just do your best to help these birds have the best chances of survival like i said one out of three actually make it all right guys i hope you learned a little bit today that i got you fired up to put some bird seeds and bird feeders out i'll see you real soon in the next video and until then y'all have a great couple of days bye bye